Hello and welcome to this lesson from the GCSE PE portal. Today we're going to be looking at the spirometer trace, what it represents, how to draw them, and what it actually tells us about our lung volumes and capacities. So to start with, we've got the, the graph okay, that the spirometer trace is drawn onto. And what I want to talk about first is what they represent. To start with, we've got milliliters or liters up on this side because we're talking about the volume of air that's actually inside the lungs. Okay, so it's a measure of liter or measure of volume. And whenever the line is close towards the top, that's where we've got maximum fill. And whenever the line is close to the bottom, that's when we've got maximal empty, okay? Now the line is gonna look some sort of squiggle in between, but the breathing represents, or someone's breathing rate and breathing depth corres corresponds to what that line does. So for this one, or this one for example, this would be a normal breath. Okay, maximal inhalation, but not maximal exhalation. So different breathing patterns and different breathing volumes corresponds to different spirometer traces. At the bottom, we have time. So I want to put T down here. The further to the right the trace goes, the longer the trace has been, has been going on. So let's say you wanted to track someone's breathing or predict someone's breathing for a 90 minute football match, then you might put 100 down here to get a little bit of recovery as well. And you might put minus 10 here to get a bit of the anticipation or the anticipatory rise because of the nerves. And then you would track the spirometer trace on that graph and you can look at the time period along the x-axis. But we're not going to be looking in too much detail at that today. What we're going to be looking at are the definitions of the different volumes and capacities that you need to know for your exam. So we're going to start off by putting on two new lines, which are some dashed ones. And what this represents is something called your tidal volume. I'll just put TV here. Your tidal volume is the amount of air that you breathe in or out in a normal breath. So at rest, your tidal volume is going to be very routine and it will stay between those boundaries there, your resting tidal volume. Now when you start to exercise, this line is going to start to increase because you have more energy demands in your body, more O2 demands around your body and a build up of CO2. So your brain responds by making you breathe quicker, deeper, so you increase your minute ventilation. Now if you reach a plateau, then you can refer to the plateau as, if I rub this one out, your plateau is your new tidal volume. So if you actually reach a predictable volume, so let's say you're doing a regular or a sustained bike ride, you've now got a new tidal volume because that's the volume of air that you breathe in or out in a normal breath. What we can talk about though is, is the volumes of air in your, or the, the, the volumes of space in your lungs that you have to use in order to increase this tidal volume. And the first one I want to speak about is something called your IRV. Your IRV, or your inspiratory reserve volume. Okay, inspiratory reserve volume. Because we're talking about inspiration, we're talking about filling, we're talking about this section up here. Okay, towards maximal fill. Expiratory would be below. So inspiratory reserve volume. It's the space in your lung that you can still fill after a normal breath in. So if I'm breathing normally, it's the, it's the space in my lungs that I can still fill up after I've had a normal breath in. So at rest, because my normal breath in is relatively small, I've still got all of this space in my lungs that I can call on to increase my tidal volume into, so I start to breathe more and more in each breath until eventually I'm tapped out and I've got no extra room in my lungs that I can avail of during my inhalation. So we've got the RV, the inspiratory reserve volume above our tidal volume, we also have our ERV, our expiratory reserve volume. E R V. Expiratory reserve volume. It's the space below 
your tidal volume. It's the space below your normal exhalation. So if you're breathing normally, it's however much air you can still forcibly exhale after a normal breath out. And what it represents is when we do start to increase our, our exercise, we have to increase our minute ventilation. We want to be forcing and emptying our lungs more so that there's more space for us to then fill it back up with during inhalation. So we want to get rid of as much as possible, empty it all out, so then my inhalation is going to be absolutely jam-packed with oxygen. However, even after a maximal exhalation, so following a maximum exhalation, we've exhausted our expiratory reserve volume, we're going to hit a limit. Okay, you can even try this now if you want to. You can breathe out as much air as you want, and it doesn't matter how hard you try, there will always be some air left inside your lungs. This is called your residual volume. The volume of air that always resides inside of your lungs. It always keeps the alveoli semi-inflated, prevents the lungs from collapsing, from damaging those tiny, delicate air sacs. The only way that you can possibly get your residual volume out is if you're crushed. So maybe in a scrum breakdown in rugby, or a particular heavy hit in American football, and there's an external force that's actually applied onto your thoracic cavity and lungs, and they've actually been squashed and deflated. It's bad news. We always want to have some residual volume inside of our lungs. So the gap between the top of our residual volume and our normal resting tidal volume exhalation, that's our expiratory reserve volume. The trace in between, so the normal inhale and exhale, that's called our tidal volume. And the space above a normal inhalation that we can still fill up with air following a normal inhalation is our inspiratory reserve volume. But, and you, again, you can try this one at home as well, if you try and take an absolute maximum inhalation, you'll find that there's a, there's a limit. Okay, just like a balloon has its, has its peak, just like a water bottle can't fill up past its brim, our lungs have a maximum capacity. Okay, a maximum capacity. What we call that, I'll just put a dash up here, is our total TLC, total lung capacity. Our total lung capacity. The way we calculate that figure is by adding our inspiratory reserve volume space. We add that to our tidal volume, our normal breath in or normal breath out. We add that to our expiratory reserve volume, how much we can exhale after a normal exhalation. And then we add that to our residual volume, how much air is left in our lungs following a maximum exhalation. If we add all of those volumes up, we arrive at our total lung capacity. During exercise, and I've already, I've already said sort of how, how it can plateau, what you need to be aware of though is that different exercises cause spirometer traces to react differently. As soon as intensity goes up, our spirometer trace is going to change. Short term, we only really use our inspiratory reserve volume because we haven't engaged our expiratory mechanics of breathing just yet. Our brain hasn't caught up. Give it a minute or so, and then we'll start to see deeper breaths out. As our exhalation increases, our inhalation has now got more space to breathe in as well. So we start to get these really steep and tall waves on the spirometer trace. So the height of the wave represents depth of breathing and the amount of volume that's coming in each tidal breath. And the wave distance or the wave length, okay, the distance between each peak, that represents the frequency or our breathing rate. And like we looked at in a previous video, let's put this slap bang in the middle, we know that minute ventilation equals tidal volume times breathing rate. If we can increase the tidal volume, so the wave height, and we can increase, or sorry, decrease the wave length, our minute ventilation is going to be increasing, which means better oxygen delivery for our working muscles, better CO2 delivery, and we're going to respond better to exercise and be able to exercise for longer 
without fatiguing. And that is the spirometer trace. I hope that was helpful and I'll see you again soon.